Hey everyone, Zoran here from Hot Property Buyers Agency. I just wanted to share with you something really interesting that I've discovered recently and it's something that I personally have come across with my own property portfolio when I was doing a uh, review of my insurances. Uh, my landlord insurance um, especially is what I wanted to speak to you guys about today. Now. I personally was with a company uh, that a lot of Queenslanders use. I'm not going to say any names, but uh, you know, if you're if you're a Queenslander, you know probably know who I'm talking about. Um, so I was with those guys for several years. Uh, vehicle insurance, property insurance. Um, I had multi policy discounts through those guys as well because I had so much business with them. Um, so uh, yeah, I thought I was in a really good wicket. Um, they claim to have really good coverage for storm events and those sort of things. And in Queensland, you really want all of that. Um, but what I then discovered was a gap in, uh, in their insurance and something that I was really concerned with. So I personally have made the change to another company. Um, if you'd like to know who I've changed to, please contact me. I don't want to advertise particular companies in this video and that sort of stuff because it's going to go on YouTube and I don't really want to uh, put down one or put up one, another one, but I just want to tell you what I've discovered. So company A, the company I was with originally, for example, if my tenants stopped paying rent and we go through the process of, of uh, requesting the tenants to remedy the breach and, and to vacate the property and yet they still don't. Um, they will not cover me until I have lost four weeks rent. The, the, the cover of shortfall of rent doesn't actually kick in until four weeks has been achieved. So already I've lost four weeks, which is my bond. Now, let's say for argument's sake, we don't go through QCAT. At that stage, the tenant uh, leaves the property, you know, now leaves the property vacant. So I've lost four or five weeks worth of rent. Uh, and then also they've left the property in a pretty untidy state because obviously they probably were in a, a difficult position. Uh, you know, maybe there's some uh, accidental damage, maybe there's rubbish left at the property, maybe it's just physically untidy. So right now you could assume we're around four and a half, five thousand dollars negative due to loss of rent, recovery uh, and, um, and make good of the property to get it to a tenable standard, and then also marketing of the property as well. Pro uh, insurance company A has not covered me for any of this because there's no malicious damage, and, and malicious is, I guess, open for interpretation of, you know, was that an accidental hole in the wall or was that a malicious hole in the wall? So, you know, those kind of things um, was a very gray area with the insurance company A. And as I said, they don't start covering loss of rent until I personally, uh, until a tenant has not paid rent for four weeks, then it kicks in. So I started shopping around. I went to another insurance company, insurance company B, who specialize in property and landlord insurance. So you probably already guess who they are, but as I said, email me. Now, these particular guys will cover up to six weeks of lost rent with no excess. Um, as long as your property manager has followed the adequate notices to remedy the breach and they've gone through that process as per the legislation outlines. So what you do anyway, you're going to have your property professionally managed and they should be following that process. So in theory, you're covered. Um, if you have to go to QCAT, they will cover you for up to 16 weeks because that process can drag out. Have to remember, unfortunately, the process of uh, through the RTA and through other relevant government bodies is highly leveraged to the tenant uh, these days, unfortunately. So the process can be a little bit difficult for investors, but obviously it's the process we have to, uh, have to follow and the guidelines we have to progress with. Also what I found, found interesting with insurance company B was that they will cover malicious, accidental, you know, any damage whatsoever left by the tenant, wear and tear, um, you know, in this situation, uh, excess wear and tear, sorry, let me be really clear. Uh, now, look, personally, I haven't read the product disclosure statement. I had a conversation with a representative from A and B insurance companies. Um, I'm just relaying, you know, what was told to me um, from those guys. So please do your own research and please make sure that you read the PDS and all that sort of jargon as well. But I found it really interesting because insurance company A would charge me a $500 excess for every malicious bit of damage or accidental damage 
that was caused. Um, so for argument's sake, um, uh, sorry, no, I've gotten that wrong, malicious damage. So let's say for argument's sake, there are three holes in the walls, bedroom one, two, and three. They would charge me an excess for each one of those because they are separate events. Insurance company B, they cap out at two excesses and their excesses are $250. So at $500 for my two excesses, for example, the, the, the case I just mentioned with three holes in the walls, bedroom one, two, and three, you'd be maxed out at $500 excess, but they will cover you up to $60,000 worth of damage. So again, guys, I guess the purpose of this video is just to say, please shop around. Insurance company B, in fact, was no more expensive. In fact, they were cheaper than insurance company A, and their policy, in my eyes, was a superior policy. And I guess it's because they specialize in that field. I guess if, it's like anything. If you work with someone who's a specialist in that field, you're going to get the better result normally. So uh, guys, shop around, have a look, really investigate the worst case scenarios, because that's why you have insurance for your property. It's not for the, the, the sunny, bright, blue sky days. Uh, it's for the, the, you know, the cloudy days when something goes wrong. And that's also why you have another insurance policy called a professional property manager to deal with those processes as well. So guys, if you have any questions in relation to this or any of my videos, please send us an email to inquiry at hpsba.com.au or give us a call on 3170 3760. Thanks guys, have a great day.